Hi everybody, this is Angel Arts and welcome back to session 5 of Let's Play Dragon Age Resurgence, the tabletop campaign, aka Dragon Age Season 2 campaign. Uh, unfortunately, Rachel is not able to join us today, um, but that's okay. Uh, we are going to press on and um, hopefully she will be able to uh, we'll be able to see her smiling face again in session six. Love you, Rachel. We'll miss her. We miss you, Rachel. <laughs> but, um... I need my tank. <laughs> I want to, uh, for today's warm-up question, uh, feel free to take a little bit of time to think about this, and please remind me to ask Rachel this question at the beginning of next session as well so that she can also answer this question too. Every now and then, I kind of want to take a pulse uh, from each of the characters, and uh, you've, I'm, I'm sure you've seen me ask this question before. Pretend hypothetically, and you can decide if this is hypothetical or if this is something that you actually would write or will write in your journals or diaries. Pretend that at this point in the game, your character is writing in your journal or writing in your diary, and I just want to know what, what are the, some of the things that you think you would put down in your diary. Uh, maybe some of the thoughts that you're having, maybe some things that um, you might ne not necessarily divulge to the rest of the group, either because it's none of their business or it just doesn't come up in, it just wouldn't come up in general conversation that you are willing to reveal to the audience now, if it's anything that you'd like to reveal. Um, that's going through your character's head. Well, right off the bat, I can, I can already think of one, and it involves uh, Hugh, and okay. as to why he doesn't remember the bar scene. Mm -hmm. That's been like bugging Cedric ever since uh, he found out. He's just like, what is going on? It should bug you. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> uh, ominous. <laughs> I, I didn't, uh, I actually wasn't sure if you were ever going to ask him that question, but you did, and I was like, oh, he, he asked that question. Um, so that, that would be, like, number one. He's, like, just trying, I think he'd be trying to work it out. Okay. Um, and number two is the visions that he's been having regarding uh connor and yeah just trying to wrap his head around that like why me what's going on like who is this guy because <laughs> i'm pretty sure he like he he rolled low on his cutting so <laughs> I don't think. so the so the fact that you were naked in a box is your lowest your least concern <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean just a regular just monday yeah, I was gonna say it's a regular day of the week. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely a concern, but it's just like more of like the people around him right now, and he's like, why, why are these happening to like these people and me? Like, how am I connected to them? Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I, I was naked in a box, but these people can <laughs> affect my life right now. Yep. So, yep. I mean, that's up there, but it's not like taking precedent right now. Something that Andrea is thinking that she's not ready to d reveal to, like her, her diary entry is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, she would probably talk about who she, uh, she would be talking about her own mission um, and the fact that she can't uh, break into the office yet but mm -hmm. she knows that the, there is magic that will uh, that she is going to learn in the future that will get her into the office at the very least. She she knows that. So um, so she's right now her goal is to work really hard to learn that magic so she can get into the office and steal the stuff. Um, she doesn't. She doesn't bear Gwenil any ill will. He seems like a really nice guy, but she's. It, it's 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 for Trina, so it's it's worth it. Um, and it's just a thing to her at this point, so it it's a sacrifice that she's willing to make. <laughs> um, as 
as for the other items, she's really curious. I think the entire time she's been like, I don't know why Kane would pick me for this job because I'm I'm a fighter by trade, not an investigator or anything like that. But she kept her mouth shut because it got her free. So, so. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm perfect for this job. But really, she's like, I don't know why you would pick me for this job. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that's something that she's been thinking about. As for the the other characters in the group, she she's weirdly cool with Razakale, and I think that's really fun. <laughs> but but I think it's like. It started out as a really, you know, like, curious thing. She's a curiosity, but she's liking her more and more as the sessions progress. So mm -hmm. I think that's kind of cool. And she's like, why, oh, why, in this party of people is the one I like most a dark spot? <laughs> 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 but, but it is. <laughs> and, uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's funny because I actually did a journal entry in my Roll20 page. I just started it mm -hmm. after the last session. So what was on her mind was she was um, trying to think of why she had gotten the bracer in the first place and why she had been assigned that specific to, to either and what that means to her. And um, um, let me see what else did I write. And then... She talked a lot about how she doesn't know who these people are, why they were chosen, and so she feels like I put judge in there. I don't know if that was the right word to put, but she she's trying to see if they're worthy of this gift and if they deserve it. Um, and so she's been keeping a close eye on them. Um, and then uh, the stuff with Esburen, um that I'll mention again. Uh, she hasn't been apart with him for a really long time, and she's really nervous about being on her own without him. And um, she's trying to, she's hoping that she's strong enough on her own, so we'll see if that happens. That was pretty much all she said. Uh, the biggest part okay. was being, uh, are these people worthy of these bracers? I think the, the main thing that Theo doesn't, uh or tries not to let show is the the fear that he has um not only because the party are kind of strangers to him but also that they might be friends because theo doesn't have companions he doesn't work in groups um and the few times that he has um bonded with people he he's lost them so it's not as straightforward as saying he's afraid that these people are, are new to him. It's also being afraid that they might actually help and they might actually care. And he's afraid to get close to them. Um, and he knows, or, or at least he believes, that if he does so, something's going to happen. Um, almost like it, it's an omen. Something will happen if he gets close to someone. Um, uh, as far as the party members individually, um, he's getting more and more respect for Cedric because he's increasingly been quite honest and straightforward since his announcement. Um, and I think as far as um, trust, he probably trusts Cedric the most at the moment. Um, uh, and and a, still a big question mark for him is Kenna because all the interactions that Theo and Kenna have had up to this point have either been her mocking him or her kind of being very straight with him, like just like here's some elf fruit and then going away, and that really unnerves him. Like <laughs> she's holding something back, or she's just like, or or she doesn't, you know, or she doesn't care. But either way, it's like she's she's just oddly twitchy for him, um, and he's not really sure what to make of her. Um, and, uh, it, well, I mean, I said in the beginning of another session, you know, he, he, what he likes about Andrea is it's all on the surface, it's all out there, um, and she, she doesn't seem to care what anyone thinks, and she just says what she's thinking, and he really admires that. 
Is that all that Theoban says about Andrea? <laughs> is there a little bit more about Andrea that Theoban might there, be? There might uh... be like a secret folded part of the paper um, where there's like a few scribbles about okay. being a beautiful funerary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you still right. wouldn't actually mention her by name, uh, just okay. on the really odd chance that somebody saw it. But yeah. <laughs> It could have been any Kunari. It could have been any female Kunari. But, you know, it has a tramp stamp. Yes. <laughs> the Wending Wood. The forest rises and falls like the breath of the Maker. The wood was once home to the Avar, a sacred land turned bloody, according to a friend. <laughs> With scars of the land forgotten and all but overswept, it's now better known for a new history, the Pilgrim's Path. Many faithful dare to find this path through the wood and follow the steps of Andraste until they reach shining Amaranthine. They stop and marvel at the relics scattered about the wood to honor the Maker's Bride. It's a journey of a spirit of now. I wonder how many would stop to honor the spirits of then, too. For at her origins, our prophet was Alamari. But life thrives onward, whether remembered or no. It trod the earth now, new souls to face each day. And now it is the silverite mines which has drawn us back. Again. I was hoping I would not return until I'd found answers, but where the prophet f sends me, so shall I walk and be grateful for the guidance. My compatriots have allowed Princess Violetta to accompany us on our journey. I'll admit to some surprise at that, as I did allow them their chance to speak up if they had their reservations. With so many odd happenings of late, I hesitate to give Violetta more information than our agreement allows, but I trust my companions are clever enough to be careful. Plus, whatever pieces of this puzzle remain, when the Maker sends a blessing or an ally, one should be grateful. So long as she continues to act honorably and doesn't threaten the safety of my companions, I'll have no qualms but I can't say I fully understand her why. To make things fair, I will ask the four of you, select one of the party NPCs for me to write a journal entry about. Who do you want to get in? Whose head do you want me to get into? Oh my God. So there's Connor, there's Razakale, there's Esbjorn, and there's Hugh. We Which of those four do you want to go, oh. me to go into their heads? That's an impossible choice. Sophie's right. choice. Oh my god. So <laughs> I don't think it's that bad, but okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's so well, I'm, I'm thinking practically, Rosakale can't speak much English, so it'd be quite tricky. And well, he, because... if I were to, if I yeah. were to do Rosakale, she'd be writing in her own language. So you would actually hear Rosakale speak fluently oh, like she would okay. actually be she would speak completely fluently because it's right just in her language so. i'm really torn between Razakel and hugh those are the two i'm stuck with too yeah. <laughs> although the bear's perspective would be really cool <laughs> so yeah esbjorn's I'm perspective biased. would be interesting as well i'm, I'm biased i'm biased but <laughs> i think the bear oh. would be hilarious but <laughs> he could be very intelligent Razakel or the bear i'm sold yeah <laughs> <laughs> The bear, just to see, but um, I <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh. First she left me at the castle, now she left me in this place. <laughs> oh my gosh. With some strange man. <laughs> this teenager is twitchy. I should eat him. <laughs> I already ate all my food. What if I eat this? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I just whatever don't... I say is mine is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it would be awesome if the bear was deep and meaningful, but uh, we also risk just getting a journal entry of what he's eaten that day. Yeah. <laughs> he can't be deep and insightful. He could be. That's what I'm saying. It'd be he great be if he was. Bear. Bear. You don't know. <laughs> I don't want to risk saying bear and then Hawk to give us like a schedule of everything he's done that day. <laughs> okay. 
right. So who is, is it? Who is it? Who are you guys picking, Razakel? Is that what I'm hearing? Sure. Yep. Okay. Even oh, though Connor oh, is my friend. <laughs> yeah. Andrea and Razakel seem to be BFFs at the moment. Razakel starts. If she were to write on an, her entry, this is what she would say. I've been traveling with this group for some time right now, and I have to say, I like them. I really like them. They seem to have some inner party conflicts every now and then, but overall, I think that I might be able to get what I need by following them. I hope that my people back home are doing all right. When I set out on this journey, I was determined to find the help that we desperately needed. It's not easy being out here on the surface. I always have to continually be on guard. And it's really hard to blend in because so many things up here are so new to me. It's not easy being up here knowing that any person who even sees your face could attack you on sight. I guess I took a great risk when I started talking to Kenna at one point, but something about her, I don't know. She seemed to be someone I could trust, at least for now. I'm not really sure if she likes me back. I guess I try to do what I can to help her out, but quite often I almost feel like I'm in the way sometimes. But that's okay. When that happens, the pretty one seems to like me a lot. I wish I could talk to her, communicate with her better though. Although, of everyone there, she and I are the ones that seem to be able to have the closest to actually, well, understanding each other. Understanding. That's something that my people desperately need. But it's just very hard. Then there's Broody. I haven't really <laughs> talked very much about to Broody. I kind of keep my distance from him. Although I have to say, whipping him around and tossing him to that funny looking clown woman was pretty darn cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Arrow. I haven't really talked much to Arrow either, but I have a slight feeling that Arrow might want to talk to my pretty friend a little bit more though. I guess they would be cute with each other. Queen though, there's a woman I respect. I can't understand a word that she says, but the way she says it, it just makes me want to listen to everything that she's <laughs> talking about. I wish I actually knew what she was talking about most of the time. The painter seems really nice. I really love the portrait that he made. And if I'm able to take him back home, think of the, think of the things he could do down there. The color. So little of it down there. It doesn't really seem like my brothers and sisters find much use to it. So why do I? The bear. Now that is probably the one that I respect eh, probably second to the queen the most. He's very straightforward and I think we're actually getting a pretty good rapport with each other. Kenna seems to have trained him very well. Or is it the other way around? I'm not oh. sure. That's <laughs> probably the other way around. <laughs> Then there's this new kid. I don't know about him. Something about him seems really strange. He smells funny to me. I don't know. We'll see. Friends. Not sure yet. Would be nice. Would be nice. It's Kale's entry. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be so hard not to do that in character. Like, how <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rosie. I love you. <laughs> Darn it, you made her relatable to Theo as well when you were talking about her being on the surface. That was horrible. <laughs> Who are you no, called? He's not, supposed, he's not supposed to have things in common with the dance sport. Oh, I had a question. Yeah. Does Razakil like her new outfit with the... Oh, yes. Harlequin. No, she yes, she probably will say. Fine. She said... Oh, and I really love this new outfit that Kenny gave me. Um, I guess it's sort of like a trophy from the clown-looking person that we chased after. I wasn't sure about that at first, but it's super comfortable. Very, and a lot less 
restrictive than I was wearing before. Yes, I think these will do quite nicely. And the colors, oh, the colors. Love the colors. That's the best part. Aww. Those are her thoughts. I want to get her like a whole wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> my people collect magnets. I collect outfits for my dark spawn. Okay, she <laughs> is a dark spawn, not a Barbie doll. <laughs> Barbie doll. <laughs> I'm a dark spawn girl in a dark spawn world. <laughs> <laughs> Life in the deep up. roads. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sam was talking about getting her an outfit as a theme for every place we visit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask the Gypsy Queen later. I'm like, hey. So, you guys have just started walking through the Wending Wood. Now, as I said, the Wending Woods are very well known for having a lot of sylvan activities. Uh, it is lush with wildlife um, and many, uh, many botanists come here from all around um, looking for some of the rare herbs and plants that grow here. While you guys are walking, um, Razakale actually uh, walks up to uh, Theoban, and uh, she's got this uh, bit of a... Well, she's wearing... I think when she's out in public, she's wearing the mask. Um, and uh, the mask of the Harlequin. Um, so you can kind of see... You, it's hard for you to see her expression, but uh, she, you can kind of sense that she's a little giggly when she's walking up to Theoban. <laughs> he's, he's shuffling kind of away from her, like, she's not approaching me, is she? Yeah, she's probably just going to walk behind me. I'm just going to move out the way. She she uh, walks a little bit f faster just to catch up to you, and she says, You like pretty. <laughs> I what? <laughs> you like pretty. Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. Why are you near me? She 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 responds as if she didn't understand a word you said and said, "Go say something. Talk to pretty." Are you trying to fix me up with your friends? <laughs> fix up, she said, repeats. Are you are you trying to get me in her to? <laughs> you. Kiss, kiss, she says. Oh, okay. Um, he's going to look awkwardly away. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I wasn't aware that Darkspawn knew about kissing. But he looks kind of disgusted. <laughs> you not like pretty? Can we stop calling her pretty? She has a name. If you not like pretty, then I go after pretty. Stay away from pretty. <laughs> ah, see? Got you. <laughs> Just go away. <laughs> she starts giggling. Oh, <laughs> and she walks away. <laughs> Still giggling to herself. <laughs> so cute. She's looking cute. <laughs> uh, I also want to. You mentioned that there was like herbs and stuff in the Wending Wood. Can I do a search to see if there's Oh, any yeah. Herbs? Yes. <laughs> search or nature, any of those. Uh, I'm going to say that you don't find any of the rarer. We'll say that with a 14, you were able to find enough to make... You, you find the necessary herbs to make two batches of crow's poison. Can I sneak off from the group and sort of find a hidden spot in the forest? You're gonna... Okay. Just, uh, I don't know if I can... Are you trying to... Perp, are you trying to make it so people don't notice that you're sneaking off? Yeah. All right, so you'll have to make a stealth for me. Okay. And then everybody else roll a perception All scene. Right. This should be good. <laughs> and if anyone grows higher than her, then you will notice her sneaking off. She got a 12. Yeah, 12. All right. 
<laughs> All right. So <laughs> and I don't see anything. <laughs> we'll we'll assume nobody's we'll assume that Halaser and and Theo. uh Theoban did not see you sneak off. So you snuck off. Cool. I'm too busy looking at both the mages. <laughs> <laughs> or okay. I'm sorry. Well, could, Hannah? What what did I miss? My uh thing crashed. Well, uh if you want to roll a perception seeing roll cuz Ken is trying to sneak off at least Temporarily, I think. Really quickly. From the group, so roll a scene, and then, and then you you were telling me which novice level poison you were trying yeah. to make in the near future. If you beat a twelve, if you get a twelve or higher, you'll be able to spot okay. Kenna. Um, Crow's poison is a novice poison, by the way. I yeah. Cr oh, I guess I must have crashed. Um... Before I got to say that. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay. So Theo does catch a sight of Kenna sneaking off. I don't know if Theo does anything about it. He does. He goes straight after her. Okay. Uh, where are you going? To the bathroom. You gonna follow me? I might, if I suspect you're up to no good. Where are you going? To take a piss. Do you mind? <laughs> like... Is is there like a check or something I can do to see if I believe that? Because that's what Theo does. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can do communication. Roll a communication to see if you have any reason to think that she's if if it is if she's lying that she has to roll. Ken, if she's lying, she has to roll a deception. Oh, I have to roll deception. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're not actually going to the bathroom no, and I'm doing not something actually else. Going to the bathroom. All right. Roll it. Roll a deception and then. And then Theoban has to roll a communication. Fourteen. Ah, okay. So I do believe her. You believe her. Do you well, mind the Well, don't take too long. Important I'm... stuff to do, remember? Yeah, I know. I just have to pee. Jeez. <laughs> don't worry, I can find you. You all move like a roaming herd of Druffalo. I'll be able so to find on... you. How on earth can you compare us to Druffalo? You carry a bear with you. And we still move quieter than you. Now go away. <laughs> Fine. Be quick. He walks off. How rude. Okay. So, Kenna, you go off, and what do you do? Okay. I uh, find a nice, pretty spot where there's some soil. Mm -hmm. And I take my staff, and I smash it into the ground so that it digs a little deep. And my, with nice. my left hand on the staff and my right hand on the ground... Mm -hmm. I say, um, I call upon the Mountain Father and ask for the gift of health and healing, and I summon four of the good berries. Yes, so this tiny little uh, mini bush, like, sprouts up, and by mini I mean, like, the size of, the size of my mug, for example. Probably smaller than this, actually. And um, it just kind of sprouts up from where mm. she struck the mm. earth with her staff. And out pops four plump, sparkly-looking berries, um, of which Kenna can harvest immediately. Yep, I take them. Okay. And then I go and catch up with the group. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and I give Theo a dirty look. <laughs> I, told you, I told you to make it quick. It was quick. Princess Violetta will, will pop and say, It's Theoban, darling. Us ladies, we require a little bit of extra time in order to use the bathroom. It's true. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Forgive me for being suspicious when uh, a sudden bathroom break is required as we're going into a dangerous cave. Well, better right. I go now than have to go in the cave. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to push it, all right? Just... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just move on. Uh, when, you, uh, when you start to move on, Princess Violeta says, Don't let him get the best of you, my Avarian princess. <laughs> he doesn't. Don't worry. <laughs> What's his problem, exactly? She asks you. I don't know. He's a little wound up for a dwarf. I guess. He's got a lot on his mind. 
He does seem to be a bit edgy, at least much more than he was last night. Hi. Well, he's got this whole thing going on with his person in this cave and magic dwarves. It's a oh, is that what? Magic dwarves? She looks a little intrigued by this. Hi, we found it on a flyer. <clears throat> I don't have it on me. What flyer, she says, she asks. From the Harley Quinn. <laughs> she kills her Harley Quinn. <laughs> then turns towards towards uh, Razakel and she says, her? Well, that outfit, i that's where we got it. It's snazzy, isn't it? No, there is there was a thief and we caught him, uh, her, and she had a flyer on her. Said that there's magic dwarves or some sort. I don't know, I didn't hear. I was busy disciplining Templars. You don't believe that there are actual magical dwarves, do you? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's a story. A trap, most likely. Hmm. So if it's the trap, why exactly are we walking towards it again? The princess asks. Uh, the lady is a friend, acquaintance of uh, Theo. Oh, I see. You're, well, his life is a lot more complicated than I thought. Isn't it though? She says with a bit of concern on her face. Hmm. Is there anything you need, my lady? Me? <laughs> she grins. Me, dear? She says, I'm sort of just taking in the sights, keeping an eye out for a rare mushroom that I wanted to, uh, wanted to use in some of my remedies once we get back. What's it look like? I know these woods, well, not these woods specifically, but I know woods in general. I'd like you to make you find it. Well, I'm afraid it's not exactly the most pleasant looking of plants as fungi go, as fungi go. It's, a. Uh, it's a spaghetti mushroom. It actually looks a lot like stringy spaghetti when you burst it open. Oh. Uh, uh, the gooey spores are sort of like embedded within the strands. Like I said, it's not the prettiest of things. Of course, mushrooms in general aren't necessarily the, uh, the beauty queens of the forest, but... They're very helpful. That's fine. Indeed, quite helpful. Potions, however, are not necessarily my specialty, but I try to dab a little bit when I can. Oh, hmm. Well, I'll keep my eye out for you. See if I spot anything. <laughs> she smiles a bit and uh, gives your... She kind of gives your uh, arm a, a, a small squeeze. Thanks. <laughs> 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 they, always, they always go for the weakest in the herd. Just saying. <laughs> she's so cool. She did a slowing spell. She's the most so exotic pretty. one of the group, apparently. <laughs> At she least in her been. eyes. <laughs> Kenna loves her. She's awesome. Ugh. Oh, no. <laughs> That's cool. Kate, Kate to Kenna's ego. She loves anyone. <laughs> Hugh, Hugh, meanwhile, is uh, keeping up uh, his the pace with... with uh, with uh, Cedric, and uh, I guess he'll actually ask Cedric, how are you uh, feeling today, Cedric? Um, I'm feeling pretty good, you, why? I was just curious, I know that you've had a lot on your mind. I wasn't sure if you wanted to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Now's not a great time to talk about it. We need to focus on the task at hand. He uh, he nods. Forgive me. I know that we are quite a ways from the Silverite Mines. I just thought that it would be an opportune time. But if you do not wish to speak, just know I'm always there if you need one to hear to listen to. I appreciate that, Hugh. Of course. We'll talk later. He will nod and continue on. I just wanted to go to Hugh and Cedric. Sure. Um. <clears throat> Hello, Kenna. I hope that you alle you alleviated yourself very well. <laughs> oh, oh, I, yep, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. 
Uh, I actually found something in the forest that I think would be very helpful. And I pull out three of the berries and I give two to Hugh and one to Cedric. Um, what are what are these? Yeah. These, I didn't think I'd find them here. They're usually in the frost backs. Um, but they sort of make you feel good if you're hurt. They sort of heal you. You just... Really? Yes. He gives it a sniff. Kenna, when you cast this spell, you can decide what the fruit tastes like. And it's normally tastes like a combination of two or three different fruits. Okay. So what two or three different fruits does this... Do these specific berries taste like right now? Uh, pomegranate, blueberry, and strawberry. Pomegranate, mm. blueberry, and strawberry, all in one berry. Wow. This that sounds very good. really good. It says, this smells very good. Do I really need to be hurt in order to take advantage of them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would. it's probably better use of them. But if you get hungry, you can eat it too, I guess. They're pretty rare, though. They do nourish you. Each berry actually gives enough nutritional value. If you're fully healed, it gives you enough nutritional value for one meal. So if it's like lamb is bread. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. yeah. Well, I thank you for this, Kenna. It's very I... thoughtful of you. Well, I saw all the damage you did back in our little mirror world. So I figured it'd be good to keep you healthy. I see you gave me too. Is that because you believe that I take more damage than Cedric does? Well, I just haven't seen you work and I want to make sure you're going to be okay in the fight. You know, just a little buffer. In case. Not that I'm saying you can't fight, just that, you know, things happen. I completely understand. Thank you, Kenna. This is very generous of you. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll just go back here. <laughs> <laughs> Kenna is very nice, Hugh says to Cedric. Yes, she is very thoughtful. Are you feeling more comfortable around her nowadays? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she hasn't shown any ill will towards anyone. She's a little childish, but... I mean... I have not seen her crawling on the floor towards you as of late. <laughs> yes, thankfully. That, that was rather awkward. I, th I think I'd like to say something to Razakale quietly. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you will walk up to Razakale, and as soon as Razakale she sees you, she starts to uh, giggle a little bit uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, pretty. Hello, Razakale. What's so funny? <laughs> she says, nothing. Just. Oh, nothing. <laughs> yes, nothing. You know she's lying. <laughs> she's not a very good liar. <laughs> Even when she can't speak a different language, you know she's not a good liar. Um, what is it, pretty? I'm going to say intervene. I'm going to uh, kind of lean in and kind of gesture without pointing, but kind of like mm -hmm. nod in uh, Violetta's direction. Okay. And I'm going to say, I now trust her. Mm. You not trust her. No, watch her. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> suspicious. Yes. Yes, hmm. suspicious. You give signal and I kill. <laughs> Very good. <How> you... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I help. <laughs> she says, okay, we keep everyone safe. Yes. 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 She nods. <laughs> oh, and pretty. Yes. You talk to Arrow? Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> no reason. Just... <laughs> Curious, she says in Tavine. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I, I, I think 
he has a lot on his mind right now. Ah, I see. Lot in her in his heart too. <laughs> I just kind of raise an eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> you dance good, she says. Oh, thanks. You did too. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> uh, need more music, not enough music. Yes. <laughs> Anything else, pretty? No. Just watch. Suspicious. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Theo will look over Andrea. Like he would have gone over, but she's talking to Rosacal, so he's keeping his distance. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, at some point, at some point, they're going to separate. So if you do want to chat with. Andrea, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I'll move on. Okay. Um, then he will approach. Um, Go but ahead. he's gonna. He's gonna look like there's a new layer of awkwardness in his demeanor that's not normally there. Um, his cheeks <laughs> might be a little red. <laughs> um, <laughs> hi. <laughs> wait, wait, start, wait, start to <laughs> Recalling the conversation I just had with Rosakale, eyebrow once again goes up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, how are you doing, considering, you know, we're about to see some people I don't think you're excited to see? Ah. Um, no, no, I'm not. But it's better to know what's going on. Would you agree? Yes, I do. Then again, I mean, past is the past, so it really yes, it but, depends on how you feel. But when my past is trying to kill someone close to me through a friend, it makes it personal. So how do you want to react when you see her? How do I want to react? Yes. All right, let's say best case scenario, and it's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. But what if it's worst case scenario? How do you want us to react? If Zelinda is of the mind frame where she is willing to harm innocents, then I won't, I won't hold back, and nor should any of you. Good. In that case, I will not feel any guilt when I cut her down. I just, I just want to say, though, that it is easy to judge people on face value, and I'd like to know her reasons for. Fair enough. I'm, I'm going to take a, a a bit of a page from uh, Raza Kale's book, and I'm going to be like, well, you tell me, you give me signal, and I kill. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me I wouldn't need to give you a signal. You seem to have this instinctive kill. Thing well, going. I mean, I don't know when not to kill, so I'm trying to, you know, just... You know. <laughs> you know you, I'll, I'll, I'll let you judge this one. How's that? <laughs> like, the, uh, like the dwarven berserkers. Uh, you don't know when to stop. Like, you know, I mean... It's just, part, just part of it. It's, it when, it's, when it's you or them, I pick me. You know? <laughs> so, but, but in this, you know... In this scenario, I, I understand. We, we'll do. I'm I'm not without control. You just gotta, you know. I'll wait till you tell me, and then I will kill. <laughs> I will wink. <laughs> do you think? <laughs> do you think you would hesitate if you were fighting someone you cared deeply about? <clears throat> uh, that's hard to say. Um, I don't really have too many people to compare that to um, 
I... Maybe. But really, uh, hesitate isn't really something I do often, so... I don't know. I mean... I don't have that many people I care that much about. Um, it's, hard, it's, it's hard for me to put myself in that position. There I can't... I, I completely understand. I, I really do. Letting people get close is giving them permission to hurt you. Yes. I, I agree with you 100%. But... It's... I think it's important you know that I I did wrong this woman that we're about to see. She came to my stall desperately begging for coin and I more or less kicked the dirt in her face, called her Cassus whore and I said some other not nice things. I shouldn't have done that. I was narrow-minded. I just want you to know that because she, I, I don't think that she would be somebody that just killed without reason. Uh, all right, so when you say you wronged her, you mean you were rude to her when she came begging to you, yes? Yes, but she was not just a beggar. She was my ex fiance And it is tricky when you are trying to be someone that is always in control and something happens and you're not anymore. She, she broke off what would be a positive arrangement and I was angry. Well, um, okay. So you don't think she's evil? No. I, I guess we'll have to see when we see her how bad she's fallen because for what it's worth, you seem alright now. I mean, you might have been kind of a jerk in the past, but you know, you seem all right. You know, do I, I like to think I'm all right. Yeah, I mean, now I'm not really the best judge, <laughs> 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 but, but, but you seem all right to me. <laughs> um, I'm glad to hear that. Um, could I? Um. Never mind. Uh, I bro up. <laughs> <laughs> Snap my head over, just kind of glare at Razakel for a second. <laughs> Razakel right now, well, while you're having this conversation, Razakel's been walking alongside of Kenna. And Kenna, you kind of overhear Razakel kind of giggling to herself as she's... They're like a ways back, and she, she seems to be noticing that Andrea and Theoben are having a conversation right now. <laughs> I just give her the stink eye. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you turn towards Razakel, Razakel kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> I do love her. <laughs> then I say some word. All right, sure. Uh, <laughs> sure, you don't have anything to say because you're all high pitch and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not high pitched. <laughs> right. Um, he he uh he looks um distractedly at the surroundings and then quickly says, "Do you like flowers?" Um yeah, people give them to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you had to associate with a flower, if, if there was a flower that you would say defined you. Uh, <laughs> this is it's a weird question. Um, I don't know. Uh, 
Like, what, what would your answer be? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing poisonous, you'll be happy to know. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, of course, I do have a history of accidentally poisoning. Uh, anyway, um, the, the only reason I ask is that, well, there are a lot of flowers around, and I just wondered if any of them kind of stood out for you, for curiosity's sake. Um, I don't really know flowers that well, but uh, I like blue ones. <laughs> blue ones? Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> um, um, oh, and before I go, um... I'm I'm sorry about uh I don't think I handled it well when you told me that you were a slave. Um I I, I just um I, I had a certain perception that was probably wrong. Uh and Honestly, it was information that I kind of didn't let process before I just said whatever, you know, came into my head. And I'm sorry if I just noticed how hastily you, you left the, the bath at that point. And, and I was kind of enjoying it. So, you know, it was like, <laughs> I, I just wanted to check that well, I hadn't. Um, you did say something, admittedly, that kind of left me feeling a little salty, but the reason I left the bath was because that Lady Violetta is not to be trusted, and she was making me very nervous. However, <laughs> 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 however, uh, no, you did, you did say uh, one thing that was a little irritating, admittedly. Uh, you said that I was lucky for my position. And, that was uh, that was insensitive of me. I'm I'm sorry. It's all right. No harm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. I I know what I am. It, it, it's all right. And technically, I guess I am a little lucky. I mean, uh, it could be a lot worse. I mean, to Vinta, I could have been used as a blood sacrifice. So you know, I. I uh, yeah, a lucky one way to put it. Well, yes, I mean, I believe that's where I was coming from, uh, but I understand that it's uh, it's it's very subjective, and you know your situation much better than I, and I, I shouldn't have made such presumptions. It's all right, Theo. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, right, well, you know, uh, I've told you a lot about Zalinda, so I'm just hoping that uh, between the two of us we can keep the situation calm enough to find out what's going on. I don't want us to go in there um, and just start attacking everything on site. I, I want, want her to explain. Okay. She will explain. Hey, hey, guess what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I learned a new spell. <laughs> just so excited. You, you, you do that? Like, a new spell just pops into your head while we're traveling? I, I focus and, you know, on, yeah, 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 that's a um, mage. But <laughs> guess what I can do now? What can you do? I, I can make weapons on fire. Shut up! <laughs> <on. laughs> yeah, like, so you can be, like, shooting fire arrows and stuff. <laughs> You know, I was always jealous that Halasea got the good one. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I think I think I'd just be doing idle chit chat about how cool fire magic is okay. for a while. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. There was nothing else that I wanted to specifically talk about either. So at long last, after traveling through the Wending Woods, you're reaching about noonish or so. Um, so you've been walking for a few hours. And uh, you finally reach the entrance to what appears to be a mine of some sort. Um, well, what do you guys do? Uh, 
Violetta, is this the right one? Do you know? This is it, though I don't necessarily see any miners around. Curious. Um, could Theo um, approach the entrance and kind of listen to see if he can hear anything going on from inside? Okay. Roll a perception check. 14. You can't hear anything inside. Roll me a magic check. Oh, okay. <laughs> right out. Um, 12. 12, okay. So, Theoben, you kind of, uh, you go to the edge of the cavern, you kind of put your, your hand up, um, you know, kind of put your hand up to the side of the wall as you try to listen in. You don't hear anything from inside of the, the dark depths of the cabin. It's, it's, it's pitch black in the cavern right now. But um, as you're holding on to the, to the wall of the cave, your bracer starts to grow, glow green. A little bit and then you can start to feel the vibrations within the stone itself almost like a bat sonar if that makes sense and without even having to put your ear up against the um, up against the wall itself it's like internally you know how they say that sound travels faster through solids than it does through air or water mm -hmm. so you can hear internally in your head muffled voices down below. That's so cool. Um, can I tell the gender of those voices? It's hard to tell. It's too muffled. You can't tell the gender. It could be... Yeah, you're not sure. Not with the 12. Okay. Well, there is someone in there. You can hear muffled voices. You can hear that really? through the rock. I can actually hear that through. Uh, yeah, the rock. <clears throat> he remembers by letters that. So. <laughs> Just go. Yeah, the rocks. What? I put my ear to the rock. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You don't hear a thing. <laughs> you know, he's just gonna say. You know, you don't always have to one up me, Kenna. Kenna, maybe it's because he worships the stone. Oh, this was like a dwarf thing. I never heard of a dwarf. Dwarves being able to do that. Princess Violetta says skeptically. And well, um, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't worship the stone. That sounds too uncool. That's um, you worship rock. <laughs> yes, I worship rock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to cast a uh, rock armor. Okay, yeah. you can do that. Everyone's oh, got yeah. all these cool rock abilities. As it. Um, as it's earth-based, is there anything that Theo can do with his bracer to enhance the effect of the rock armor? Roll a magic roll. What? <laughs> I'm, yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. What did you get? I, uh, seven. Okay. Seven. Okay. Yeah. Once you make an attempt, you can't use that same attempt for another hour. Okay. So you believe that it's possible for you to enhance that spell, but couldn't quite do it this time. I can't believe I need to put stuff in magic at all. <laughs> um. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> no, I do now. I do. Um, okay. Okay, but uh, yeah, so he's going to make that attempt and look apologetically. Um, he says, well, I, I thought I, I... I was just trying something. Oh, um, I, I was thinking that... It, could I reduce the mana cost... I'm sorry? Because uh, I stunted on that. Can I yes, reduce so you, the mana? Yes. 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 Sweet. Ooh. Save that mana. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you do? We are going inside, right? <clears throat> yes. Okay, yes. That's what I was well, thinking. Well, better to know. Anyone have a light? Princess Violetta asks. Well, how I about like you her. all take a few steps back and... I'll look for traps as we go. Okay. And I mean, I don't know a whole lot, but I could be able to spot some obvious ones. If you don't mind. Sure. While you're doing yeah. that, that is what 
uh, Princess Violeta's main voodoo doll looks like. Oh. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Look, she looks like Theo. <laughs> it's like little red hair. It looks like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh no. So, so my design, my design, I, I basically designed um, Princess Violetta to be a cross between, um, a cross between Isabella and Lulu from Final Fantasy X. Oh, I love Lulu. <laughs> you know Lulu from Final Fantasy, yeah, yeah, Lulu. So that's, it's like that's basically like the kind of voodoo dolls she has it's like they're all like ridiculously adorably cute yeah but anyway she pulls out one um and she's sort of like passing her hand over this voodoo doll as if she's casting some sort of spell can i do a magic check to see what she's doing yep yeah same yeah but i was 13 now 17 <gasps> god bless you cedric <laughs> cedric you believe that this is a mental spell of some sort some sort of mental spell that she's casting on the voodoo doll. Okay, I'll I'll straight up ask her. I'll just say, what what spell is that? It seems like a mental type spell. You're very observant and learned, my warrior friend. She she says with a bit of a and the way that she says you're very learned as if like there's this there's a twinge of hmm I wonder why that is in her voice. I'm merely trying to detect thoughts within the cavern, lest we, uh, just so that we can maintain the element of surprise. Ah, that's a good idea. Amazing. Don't get too excited, she says. I can't probe people's thoughts completely. I would have to need a lock of their hair to do that. Sidestep away from her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Theo's um, grabbing his hair, just checking that it's snipped out. <laughs> she kind of, she got to notice this and says, oh, come on, people. She says, no need to be nervous around me, little old me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Says the woman who casts using a voodoo doll and shrunken heads. Yeah, no, is that, no reason. Is, is, that, is that what Andrea said? Oh, yeah. out loud? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with with uh, my practices of magic? A little creepy. <laughs> she says, well, I admit to some, perhaps, for those who are unaccustomed to it. It is a it is an art that I know is not as widely widely used only because it's very difficult to master and understand. Ah, okay. <laughs> Kenna, by the way, you're going into the cavern. Yeah, looking for traps. It's pitch black, so it's going to be oh. hard for you to look for traps. Wait, uh, can I give her my lantern? I have a lantern. I don't know how that works though. <laughs> In my inventory, I have. You can give her a lantern if you want. Yeah, I'll I'll give her my lantern. I was just okay. That's cool. No, nope, I want you to use the lantern. <laughs> okay, you Thanks, give her the lantern. Patrick. I put my left hand down and I grab the lantern. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. 